So this is going to be uh, a look at our first game we played here with the Rebel Tron deck. Opening hand was pretty good. Um, we have two pieces of Tron in hand, Prism for a draw, and we also get a plane. So we are easily going to find this white mana that we need for the uh, Lieutenant. Now it's kind of an interesting play. You kind of wonder uh, what your play is on turn two, whether it should be Prism or Lieutenant. I think in most cases your play should be Lieutenant because you want to get these Rebels into play. Uh, draw a Falcon here and it's kind of the same thing. You want to get these guys into play so that you can start activating their abilities as soon as possible. While this is a weenie deck and it does look to overwhelm an opponent with a lot of small creatures, the trick to getting those creatures into play is going to be actually getting these Rebels into play and out of Summoning Sickness. Um, Journey to Nowhere as well. Seeing double blue, uh, assumed it, it might be Delver. I think it is uh, actually ended up being um, Demir Trinket. You'll see um, Counterspell off the first, that is okay. Um, I wanted to start it here with the Lieutenant. Both are pretty weak, the Lieutenant or the Falcon, to any kind of removal. Again, this deck is going to suffer from Electricery Madness, you know, that simple kill is going to wipe the board pretty easily of these creatures but i wanted to start out at least with that guy because i had another one in hand um, i wasn't entirely sure you know if this is delver you're going to get a little more value out of the falcons because they can fly um, so you wanted to kind of see where that goes now here maybe a bit of a misplay um, again i said i wanted to get creatures in soon so they could start activating their abilities perhaps the better play there would have been to start out with prism and see if we draw into land number four um, but if we don't draw into that fourth land, then it's kind of a wasted turn. You see, we wouldn't have, so it ended up being the right call anyways. Still don't have four mana. Before I do anything else, going to try and find that fourth land. A fourth land here would give us a falcon in play, um, but don't get it, so we're going to have to start just uh, slowly working away on damage and doing uh, one at a time with the lieutenant here. So definitely benefit here. You see, Geth's Verdict comes down. You know it's some form of blue-black control. And uh, he's stuck at two lands. That definitely puts us at a big advantage in this game. Still no options as far as getting a planes um, or a Tron piece. Putting down Falcon again just because I have duplicates. So if it gets countered, I'm not terribly worried. Perhaps maybe should have gone with the Scout because of the fact that I am one land behind. Uh, the Scout provides us with one additional damage. Um, also could have been benefit from the Rift Watcher there, provides us faster damage, it has the flying ability, uh, and we get that, that life gain, so it would be something that would be perhaps a little bit more likely to draw out one of the counter spells from our opponent, who has to discard yet again on another verdict. So finally, drawing into another scout, really doubling up here, um, nothing really spectacular, we're going to do some little damage here. Again, same thing as last time, perhaps better play to try and draw out counter spells. But as soon as you see the guest verdict, you know there are less counter spells, you know you're not dealing with fairies. Um, so you can play a little bit more around that, you know your bigger issue is going to be black removal. Still not on a fourth land, going to continue to put these out. Draw into a glider here, but it is not the one we want. Um, now at this point in time, going to, I believe, take the, the chance here to put out the Rift Watcher. Again, keep putting out these rebels. The more in play means the more opportunity you have to actually get things going on as far as activating that ability. But at this point in time, without that additional land, it's really kind of a, a wasted effort. Fume Spitter going to come down. We do finally get our fourth land going. Um, it's going to be able to probably kill off the, the Falcon if he had flyers, more likely the scout here in this situation. Um, now we can still, again, attack through. We know he's going to sacrifice the spitter, so I'm going to attack through with everything, leaving four mana open here for the lieutenant, because I really want to start activating things. I have things in hand I could play, but it's more important to play things out of your deck because of the fact that um, you know these spells are always going to be there. You may not always have the opportunity to activate the rebel ability. So he does. He gets some uh, utility out of that by blocking and killing off a creature. Is going to still take some damage and down is going to come trinket mage uh, i start to activate the lieutenant here i was going to get bound in silence but realized that it was a wasted effort because the trinket mage hadn't actually hit the field yet and i was getting a little bit ahead of myself so it's going to come down and in response to its ability now i'm going to activate the lieutenant i'm going to find that bound in silence and i'm going to put it on there doing this for a couple of reasons one it keeps the board clear i can keep working away on my opponent's life um, with this kind of deck, you want to get damage in while you can, because as soon as those big guys start hitting the field, it's going to be harder to do that. Um, and he does search up a life staff, probably his best move at this point in time, because he is so far behind. 
so our turn here we have four mana available for activation on the uh the rebels here but we're going to attack through with everything because i wanted to actually attempt to find more lands you know being at four is a really terrible spot we don't have tron online so we're going to throw out a prism here and hope we find something uh, and we do actually find a land this leaves this mana open for either one of our rebels here or a rift watcher and that's what we're going to go with keeping our advantage well in hand um five life now i'm guessing he still did not have a land or a play uh, next turn this rift watcher was going to die I would have swung through for lethal damage, so he clearly didn't have anything to stop that from happening. Not a great game because, again, we didn't find our Tron piece, didn't get that along. We were a little bit behind, but I guess in our benefit, our opponent was worse off than we were. So stepping into a second game here with Rebel Post. Oh, God, sorry, Rebel Tron. Um, opening hand is terrible. We only had one land. It is a colorless. Uh, there is, I guess, some merit to chancing it. We are on the draw. Have an expedition map. But if you don't hit that second land on the top deck within those two draws, then you're really in a bad position. So it's something I I, I didn't necessarily want to take a chance on. Um, you know, maybe in testing like this, it's something to see if what the possibilities, what the odds are. Uh, but this deck is actually running less than, than your usual 24 that we see um, in most decks. So to drop down to six, this is a better hand. We have three lands available to us. One is colorless, which is awesome. We do have Expedition Map, we can find that last Tron piece, and an early Seeker on turn 3 if we have to, um, depending on the situation, Bound in Silence. It's not a bad hand uh, for having to drop to 1, and because we are, of course, on the uh, draw, it's not going to be so terrible. Now, a little debate there again, we saw in the first game, you know, do you go with the turn 1 creature, or do you start getting this Tron land base online? Um... I think, you know, in first game we took those chances, we played creatures first. I think maybe that, that still would have been the better play. I was a little bit more eager to get Tron together at this point. And we do um, have the ability to get that going thanks to the expedition map. So, game's lagging up a bit here. Going to take the opportunity to pop that expedition map at the end of our opponent's turn to get that last piece. Um, you know, playing blue, see accumulated knowledge, it is going to be some form of mono blue control without a question. So, you know, there is something to be said for trying to get in some of these early spells, trying to eat up counters so that later when you do get Nolamux Crusher, it actually lands. Um, but here's kind of the situation I talked about during the creation of this deck. Here we are in turn three. We managed to get all three pieces of our Tron together. We now have seven mana on the field. Um, but what we're missing is that, say, crucial element that would be a prism or a white mana. So the earliest we're going to be able to play a Seeker Seer will be turn 4, and that'll be, I guess, our best play, because otherwise you're looking at that turn 4, 1, 1 that we talked about, um, and it's just not as powerful. The, the ideal draw next time would be to hit a prism there so you could play the prism and a speaker and still get a, a Seeker out as well. Um, oh, seeker and a Sergeant. There you go. Uh, get those both out in the same turn, something like that, to try and accommodate for the fact that you're already behind because you're you're only on one mana, um, one colored mana by turn four. So we did choose to Piracy Trimus there. I decided to get rid of the Sergeant because, again, that 1-1 one, one play on turn four, just so underwhelming, not really seeming worth it. Throw out a Seekers here because I figured five cards in hand, four open mana. I was trying to draw out a Counterspell. It works out even better for me as it actually lands on the table, and that's going to start going to town on damage. Attacking through first just to see if he has any bounce spells, um, vapor, vapor Snag or Snap or anything of the likes, and then I would have an opportunity to replay it uh, on this turn. It doesn't, so I'm going to simply just put out another planes because I really, again, wanted to kind of get this mana base established. Kind of two colored mana is a decent place to start. Um, and he does actually throw out a Deprive on this one. I think if he had that in hand he would have been better off hitting that seeker uh, unfortunately i think he might have drawn it on that turn so throws out a delver but not going to make a lot of difference to the seeker here 
which is going to keep swing through for two, putting him on, you know, a 10 turn clock. We do have Bound in Silence, we could attempt to use that on Delver of Secrets, but being that it is probably Delver Mono Blue, there's other things we want to target. Probably a better option for us would be taking out, say, Spire Golem. That's something you'll actually find between both Mono Blue Control and Delver. So that was something I was trying to hold back Bound in Silence for. Um, every turn we hold it is going to be a worse turn for us because of the fact that he can't... Um, He's not really making plays, so he's going to have um, opportunities to counter and just draw cards and find a counter spell for it. So Delver doing a little bit of damage. Seeker is going to keep coming out. Actually, hard casts a gush there at the end of my turn. A little bit of benefit here. This Delver Secrets isn't flipping, and here's another target that the Bound and Silence would be better off targeting down the Frostburn. Um, that'll keep some of that extra damage off the table. Either way, it can't actually take advantage of the Seeker. It's going to still get its two damage through. Now, again, trying to draw counter spells, play Crusher, and he does not have it this time around, so that means that I am clear to bound in silence on that Frostburn. Um, and he does decide to repeal it to stop that from happening, and I'm okay with that. Keeps it off the table, um, keeps it one turn from doing damage, and the Crusher's going to start going to work. Re uh, repealing that Crusher would be definitely mana intensive, gets down a second Delver. And this is okay. Mostly he's just probably playing permanence at this point to sacrifice to the Crusher. Neither of these can actually block the Seeker. And getting a little bit land flooded, uh, take the opportunity I always suggest to double up on your Tron pieces just in case one gets destroyed for whatever reason. You'll have that back up in play. Uh, and does chump block there off a of Delver. Now comes Spire Golem. Spire Golem is actually more troublesome to us than that Frostburn weird. The Frostburn can get bigger, however, the uh, Spire Golem can actually block the Seekers. That is going to be the one card in his deck that can block that Seeker. So, Crusher going to attempt to swing through again. He is going to be forced to sacrifice off two more lands. Um, actually chooses to Delver there and the land, which is probably a good idea. He has not managed to flip either of those. And kind of an interesting double block here, I think, because he can't actually kill the Crusher, so I, I'm not sure I understood the point. Even if he pumps the, the Frostburn weird up, he wouldn't have enough damage. Um, oh, and that's right, he had Piracy Charm um, in this game and managed to do it that way. Still puts me in a pretty good position, gets the... Uh, Spire Golem off the board, which means that my Seeker can still attack through without much issue, and he throws down another Delver. Things get good for us here as we can slip in a Lieutenant. It's going to have plenty of opportunity to start activating on the following turn and finding more uh, creatures. Really actually gives us an advantage against counter magic decks because of the fact that uh, whatever we search with these rebels is going to go directly onto the battlefield. That provides us the opportunity to bypass any particular counter spells. Spire Golem goes down, and again, this is going to be the only thing that can handle the Seeker. I do have the option here. I'm just going to be able to activate the Lieutenant for a Bound in Silence. Definitely the greatest thing to come out of Modern Masters uh, and keep that from happening. Swing through for two, and we're going to have an opportunity here to play our second Crusher, see if he has a Counterspell on those three cards. And he does this time around. That's fine. He's still on a three-turn clock due to these Seekers. Uh, finally manages to flip that Delver, and can start going to town a little bit on my life here, uh, but I'm already going to be able to clock him out uh, on damage before he has any real opportunity to get me low enough to matter. Prism out, trying to draw into something, draw yet another land. Like I said, definitely a little flooded, but it works out because we do have this Lieutenant online and the ability to activate it um, and find whatever we need. Any attacks here, you could activate the Lieutenant if you wanted and find a blocker for it. You could trade a Rift Watcher there, actually, for that Delver. I decided that I wanted to find um, something else instead, try and get a second Seeker, beat him on this turn. Um, you know, it's, it's one thing to sit there and play defensive. It's another to just try and outright win. If he has any kind of bounce spell, snap, or whatever, it will throw us back a turn. Um, but I was willing to take that chance. So ultimately, um, deck actually performed a little bit better than I had expected. Uh, did face two kind of um, slower counter magic decks. Um, did get a little lucky against Demir Trinket. That they, they were also uh, a bit screwed, but I think effectively it, it worked a little bit better than I had expected. I had expected it to just be a total disaster. I was still able to get things going as far as um, 
activating rebels and whatnot for utility uh, and a little bit land flooded even at 23 so kind of interesting i think maybe uh, if it was something you would try maybe reduction of those uh, expedition maps would be better off um, because we are you know only in 23 lands you would think that you wouldn't get as flooded as we did um, especially with the ability to tutor up, uh, tutor up rebels so i don't know like i said turned out better than i had expected so I guess we will uh, see what else can come of this.